this morning. So our, our opening verse is coming from John, John 19, John 19, 26 and 27. Yes, Lord, John 19. And um, Lord, we just want to thank you for this time. Bless your word as it goes out into the hearts of your people. Let, us re let it be received into good ground. Let it change our hearts and minds. In Jesus' name, amen. John 19 starts off in verse 26. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. Amen. May God bless the holy word of the Lord. This is a heavy scripture, but our topic for today is stay until the end. Amen. Stay until the end. Can you say that after me? Say stay into the end. Stay into the end. Stay into the end. This is the, what we're talking about today. And um, I'm going to admit to you that um, at first I didn't know. I did not know. And I don't even want you to act like you knew either. So this is where we're just going to start this. I didn't know. Don't sit here front like you knew either. But I did not know when I first started watching Marvel movies um, that you were supposed to stay put until the credits finish. Now, I don't want, no, no, uh-uh. See, don't act like you knew that when you first saw your first Marvel movie, you got up too. Yes, you did. You didn't know. Un that, <laughs> until, <laughs> until you started noticing, no, you was the only one excusing yourself. And you started being like, hmm, maybe there's something more to this. Um, and then, or until someone told you, and then you became, you became gamed up on the Marvel movies, and then you then became the condescending critic who makes fun of everyone who gets up as soon as they leave. You've all done it. Look at them getting up. They don't miss it all. Just to look at them. Just a getting up. You don't miss, you know, we just let them go. Don't act like you didn't know, because I didn't know, but now I know now. All right? Marvel movies. Um, so today, I hope that you learn not just from this Marvel movie, but from the character that we're gonna talk about today. Um, how important it is to stay until the end. All right, to stay until the very end. And um, as you know, it's Mother's Day and I want to uh, take some time to acknowledge the full range of stories that are in the room when it comes to motherhood, amen? Um, we have all types of uh, situation, complexities, losses, grief, um, a lot of you know complex emotions. I just wanna take a moment to acknowledge those things. Um, but today we will be celebrating the concept of mother Hood by looking at the life of Mary. And somebody say Mary. So, um, you know, you, we usually don't talk about Mary unless it's Christmas time. So we're going to give Mary a little more shine on today. Amen. Um, it's interesting. It's an interesting thought that God gave Jesus the gift of a mom. Isn't that an interesting thing to think about? Of all the things when Jesus appeared in human form that God gave him a mom. And, we, and I love the Gospels because we just get little small glimpses into their relationships, right? The, the relationship between Mary and Jesus is really quite hilarious if you just w walk through it with me. I'm here to point these things out to you, how hilarious they can be. I know we only talk about Mary at Christmas, but I really appreciate the life of Mary. Mary is... if. If I'm every woman was a person, it would be Mary. Mary is a very interesting uh, character for us to, to take some time to talk about. Um, Mary was no joke. I want you to know that. Mary, Mary was not to be taken lightly. I want to, we usually be like, Hail Mary, Mother of God. We, we really sanctify her and we make it, we make her like very, Mary was no joke. Um, when the, when the angel first came to make the announcements, like, hey, Mary, you've been chosen. Congratulations. You will be pregnant. She ate that announcement. She, ate, she was like, okay, what's going to happen? All right, bet. Let's do it. Then, like, Mary was willing. We don't give Mary enough credit. It was the most bizarre announcement that one could have heard. 
um, you're going to uh, carry the, the savior of the world. Congratulations. She's like, how can this be? Don't worry about it. It's the whole thing. All right, bet. Let's go. Um, she was an unwed, brown-skinned teenage mother. Right? There's a picture. Um, do you have that picture, Mike, that I want to show? I actually love this picture. I want to show you all this picture, um, this image. Look at this image. I love this image of Mary. If we were to put it in kind of modern terms, what a brown-skinned teenage mom would look like in our context, looking for a place to stay on that night, uh, on that night when Jesus was born. There was no room in the inn. I love that they have her on the little like, mechanical horse there. Yeah, this is Mary, my girl Mary. M my girl rode on a donkey on a donkey when she was nine months pregnant, great with child. Come on, Mary was out here thugging it. Oh, oh, come on, any mom's been full term and you are like, please, Lord, just let the child come. Just please. Just, 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 today, right? Can you imagine? And then riding a donkey on that, that particular time. Remember, they had to go for the census and they traveled. She traveled on a donkey while she was full term. Praying to Mary, Mary, we don't give Mary enough props. Um, Mary was also unbothered. Um, the, she handled that scandal like a G. Um, she had to have been the talk of the town. Like, okay, so <laughs> you and Joseph <laughs> are engaged, but nothing happened, but you pregnant. All right, Mary. All right. Got you, sis. She had to have been the talk of the town, but something about Mary. Y'all remember that movie? There's something about Mary. I really wish I could preach more from the context of that movie, but it's not appropriate. <laughs> but I love that movie. There's something about Mary, right? She had, <laughs> we can't put nothing together, huh? I love Mary, and I just want us to just uh, take some time just to really focus in on what I love about Mary, because she really models what it feels like and what it looks like to sit in mystery. To sit in mystery. Think about this. This is what Mary did. She sat in mystery. You know, like when you don't quite know what you said yes to, like you, you took a, you're like, okay, yeah, I'll do it. Or you took that job and you're like, sure, that sounds great. And you don't really know what you got yourself into. You just said yes. That was our girl Mary. She said yes, but when she said, Lord, be it unto me according to your word, she really didn't really fully, I don't think, understood the breadth and the brevity of what she was really getting into with that yes. It is also important to note that she experienced the Holy Spirit even before the Holy Spirit fell. Do you know that? Before the day of Pentecost, that comes years later. Mary experienced before, after the New Testament, after the Old Testament, New Testament, Mary experienced before anybody else what it feels like to be overshadowed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes, we admire Mary. There's a lot that came with her, yes. And just like Pastor Mike said, there was so many times when Mary would just ponder things in her heart. She'd be like, hmm, what they saying about Jesus? Hmm, I'm going to tuck that away. All right, I'm going to, what, Jesus doing what? All right, I'm going to tuck that away. One of my favorite stories about Mary comes from Luke 2, Luke 2, 34. If you're taking notes, write this down, Luke 2, 24. Um, this is... Um, when Jesus, when they were presenting Jesus to the temple, he was just like eight days old. He, they were fulfilling the ritual. And this guy, Simeon, comes up to her. Simeon had been waiting to see the Messiah. God had promised him that he would see the Messiah before he died. And Simeon said this about um, the baby. He had this big blessing over the baby. Then he said this to Mary. This is so key. I want you to pay attention to this. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the right for the fall and rising of many in Israel, for a sign that is opposed. And check this out, thir verse 35, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that the thoughts, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. Okay, she was probably like, cool, 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 cool. All right, thank you. 
weird guy at the temple. You know, she just kind of put that into her heart. But this was the prophecy that was spoken over her, right? So she sat in the mystery of it. I, always, I, I also love Mary because she models what it looks like to mess up. Amen. How many people have messed up? How many moms have messed up? How many times have you been like, yeah, I, I, I made the wrong call on that? We all know what it's like to mess up. Mary models what it's like to mess up. I've, 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 um, if you're not a perfect mom, congratulations. This is for you. Because I've preached this before, but um, Mary literally lost the Savior of the world. I don't know. You had one job, Mary. He went to the temple. You don't know where Jesus is. You was looking for him for, four, for three days. You had one. You just take care of the Savior. That's all you had to do. You lost him, Mary. Where was he? You thought he was with the family, with the cousins and them. She lost him. And that just shows us that it's okay. We gonna mess up sometime. Sometimes we gonna make a mistake. We gonna lose the things that are blessings to us. But then God is able to redeem, amen? And you know, I really like this because I, I kind of feel like that's why I believe Mary was like a brown skin, dark skin, you know, black mama. Because after that, that little temple incident when he was at 12, we don't hear from Jesus again till he 33. Mary shut that down. Oh, you want to be, oh, you want to be wandering off in temples? All right. Y'all holler back at him when he's 33. And we didn't, we, there's no record of Jesus after that. Go look for yourself. Mary went black mama on him. All right. I got you. Uh, yeah. He, Jesus can't come out to play, right? Nah, he ain't, right? So we don't see Jesus again till he's 33 years old at the wedding of Cana when she became his first talent agent. You know, she booked Jesus a gig and hired, you know, wanted him to change the water into wine. Right. Jesus. Mary believed in Jesus. She wanted him to do the things like do the things I see you do all the time. Show them how great you are. She was in Wakanda. Show them who you are. That was Mary. She was ready, but she's the one that gently nudged Jesus to go into ministry when he even didn't think it was time. He's like, oh, it ain't my time yet. She's like, do what he say. Right? Mary knew. This was moms. We know. Moms know. I think you ready. Let's get out here. Um, she also experienced single parenthood. If you are a single mom, then Mary gives you good news that you can make it. Mary was a single mom. We don't know when it happened, but sometime after the temple incident, um, we don't see Joseph anymore. So we don't know. They, there's no record of how, you know, if he died, if it was an accident, did he pass? We don't know. But all we know is that Mary was a single parent, which gives us all hope, all single moms. I've been a single mom. It's rough. It's tough. But God's got you. Amen. How many believe that? Let's give the single mom some encouragement. God's got you. And she, she also modeled how to navigate having an adult child. This is the stage of life that I'm in. My two adult children are here. And it's a weird stage. No one told me. No one prepared me for, like, a, a how to navigate. When she had to learn, you know, how to let him go when your voice is not the leading voice in their lives anymore. Remember at the wedding, she's like, hey, Jesus, do what he say. Now we see another situation in Mark 12. And by the way, y'all don't mind walking through the scripture, right? Some of y'all, we didn't, you know, the word of God can speak to you even better than I could speak to you. Amen. And some of y'all didn't read this week, so I'm helping you to catch up. All right. So Matthew 12, 46. Interesting dynamic between Jesus and his mom. Check out what happened. First, uh, Matthew 12, 46, while he was still speaking to the people, he is Jesus, behold, his mother and his brothers stood outside asking to speak to him. But he replied to the man who told him, um, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And stretching out his hands toward his disciples, he says, here, here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and and sister and mother. Ooh, it's a little burn, right? Jesus was like, oh, you know, so she thought she was going to get the VIP, VIP treatment. Like, hey, tell Jesus his mama outside, him and his family. Yeah, we want to holler at Jesus. So at this point, 
um, his brothers really didn't believe in him. You could, there, there's really a lot of re recordings through scriptures where they were always wanting him to prove himself. Like, well, if you this, then you need to go and show the people who you are. But here it looks like they wanted to, hey, Jesus, let's come home. Like, you doing weird stuff. Like, you really out here. Like, you really, like, come home with us. Let's come talk to you. Let's not, you know, they wanted to come and Jesus had to, you know, put a stop to that and be like, you know, you know, now if you're going to join my kingdom, these are my brothers and sisters. Like, this is my family now. So your voice is not the leading voice in my life. Amen. So how to navigate adult children, how to navigate autonomy. How many people are in that stage of your motherhood? You're trying to like navigate. How do I handle these grown children? Right. Mary did it. Mary knew. Now, this is the one that we're going to focus on today. Mary also experienced trauma and tragedy. And this brings us to our opening scripture when we see Jesus on the cross. Um, usually we talk about this um, Good Friday. This is one of the Good Friday sayings. Jesus is hanging on a cross, bleeding, whipped, unrecognizable. Just stripes everywhere, piercing. Can you imagine as a mom watching the baby you birthed, you fed, you clothed, you watched after to see your child hanging from a cross, unrecognizable, beaten to a pulp, not just the, the heartache she must have felt watching her son on a cross. Now... This brings back the prophecy that Simeon told her back in the temple, remember? It's a full circle moment. He told her, a sword will pierce your heart. Like this boy is gonna be great. He's gonna save many, but Mary, the sword's gonna pierce your heart too. And I'm sure when she heard that, I was like, oh, okay, piercing hearts, okay, whatever. But at that moment at the cross, Mary is experiencing exactly what Simeon prophesied to her, that you gonna, this is going to hurt. See, when she signed up for that, when she said yes, that yes didn't know that the hurt was going to come with that. And there's so many moms, we've been through a lot. So many moms who have experienced tragedy of loss, of grief. Mary shows you that you can make it. You can make it. This um, is so precious to see how Jesus cared about his mother even though he was on the cross. They had a really dynamic relationship. Like even he, can you imagine him standing and he's like seeing his mom just heartbreaking at that moment. Just looking at it and you know she's probably, ah, uh, just imagine all the emotion that she's having watching her son literally dying in front of her eyes unjustly. Just like we go through all the police shootings, the child like unjustly hung by the government, beaten by the government. This was all unfair, the, the, the sword that pierced her heart. And Jesus says, you know what? Hey, 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 one of my friends, John, this is now your mom. Mom, this is now your son. Jesus creates community, amen? It which shows us moms who are going through grief and tragedy, where is your healing? It's in community. Amen? It's when we all get together. It's when we take in one another. It's when we see about one another. This is what Jesus gave Mary, the gift of community. Amen? So this is all the things that Mary walked through. And then there was Easter, right? Y'all, we just going through Mary's life. Y'all all right? We go through Easter. Yay, Jesus is risen. Woo! Her son ends up okay, right? Yay. The end, right? Is that the end? It's like that um, infomercial. But wait, there's more, right? So Jesus did rise. Jesus, you know, she, her heart was probably, yes, my son's okay. Turns out he wasn't lying. He really wasn't crazy. Yes. I did, yeah, I should have trusted him all along. But wait, there's more. This is not where our story ends. And this is the crux of our message. And this is where our point of departure. This is not where our story ends. Come on, say, that's not the end. Say it, that's not the end. Tell somebody next to you, it's not the end. It's not the end. Say it in the chat, it's not the end. This is why you always need to stay until the end. 
This is why you need to stand to the end. You have to wait until the end. Don't walk out before the benediction. You got to stay to the end. Because I found a really interesting verse in Acts. Acts 1, 13 through 14. Write this down. You might have just skipped over this. You probably never even seen. I saw a very interesting verse in Acts 1. Acts 1, 13 and 14 says of the apostles, and then uh, this is after Jesus has rose, he ascended into heaven. It says, and then they entered, they went up to the upper room, right? Remember the upper room where they were staying? Who was there? Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. 14, these all continued with, accord, with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and who? And Mary, the what? Mother of Jesus and his brothers. I would have always skipped through that, but I had to wait to the end. Who was the, when they did a roll call of who was in the upper room? Look at my girl Mary made the roll call. She was there with the, with the disciples. She was there with the other women and Mary, the mother of Jesus. And who else? Them unbelieving brothers, they finally came over to the other side. They're all in one place in one room, which means when we go to Acts chapter 2, one of my favorite verses. I'm going to get some amens from this corner right here. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Come on, let's read it. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, and they were with all one accord and in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it what? Filled the whole house where they were sitting. And then there appeared, yes, how much? As of, and it. Yeah. Woo. And first four, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and being the, as the, who was in the room when that happened? My girl, Mary, my girl, Mary was in the room. She was in the upper room at this moment. Now, this is why you got to stay into the end, because you thought the end was at the cross. You even thought the end was at the tomb. You thought the end was when he rose again. But you thought the end when he said, go make disciples. But wait, there's more. Mary was in the room when the apostles were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Do y'all understand what the implica implications of this means? This is a full circle moment for Mary because you got to remember she is the first one to experience the presence of the Holy Spirit before any of them. Remember when the Holy Spirit overshadowed her to conceive Jesus? She knew what it felt like to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And at this time, at this time, Jesus sent the power of the Holy Spirit to dwell inside of her now. Not just overshadowing, Jesus, Jesus sent his presence to live inside of her. Do y'all understand what this meant to Mary? Remember when Jesus said in John 16, 7, you don't have to turn to this, but he said, I tell you the truth, it is for your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. They couldn't understand it. But Jesus was saying, if I stay here, it's just one of me. But if I leave, I could be everywhere at one time. Which means, Mary, I will be with you. Mom, I get to have you back. When she can feel her son all the time. Because Jesus went away. God gave Mary a promise. She lost the presence of her son physically, but now Jesus was saying, I am with you always. You could always tap into me. You could always say hi to me. We could always have fellowship. I could always feel your presence. My son left me, but now I can feel him all the time. Because now the presence of Jesus, the Holy Spirit is the testimony of Jesus lives inside of me. Now she received the help that she needed. Now she received the comfort that she needed. Because that's what the Holy Spirit does. Gives us help. Gives us comfort. And this is why this verse is so rich to me. The story of Mary is so rich to me. Because this says to me that God always saves the best for last. Amen. 
God always says the best for that. And this is good news for you and me. Like just when you think it's over, just when you think it's dead, just think when you think there's no more hope, but it's when you think that your dreams are dead and died and gone. And even when things start making a comeback, it's still not over. There is different levels that God wants to take us in in the spirit. Amen. Amen. So God's never done writing your story. We never cap off. We never top off like oh, I got all I need from God. No, there's more. There's more. But wait, there's more. What if Mary would have left grief and heartache take her out? If nobody had a reason to not meet up, it was Mary. It's like, I ain't going to see y'all in no upper room. Don't ask me. I don't feel like coming. I'm still mad. Like, where am I? Do you see how they did my son? I ain't meeting up with y'all. I'm just going to isolate. I'm going to be by myself. What if Mary gave up? What if Mary didn't believe that there was more? What if Mary didn't believe in community? This is what this is all about. Church is wonderful. We can have church anywhere, but community is where we find our healing, right? Mary walked through it, y'all. She walked through the, in, the anticipation of Jesus, the uncertainty of having her son die, the trauma, everything. But you have to stay until the end because your failure is not final. Failure is not final. So no matter what you've been through, God has another level for you. Amen. You got to stay to the end. You got to stay to the end. Don't you give up. Don't you let go. You got to stay to the end. Don't you leave before the credits of your life roll. Don't you leave. Don't you give up. Don't you throw in the towel. There are still more to be written in your life. And guess what? God wants to fill you with the power of his Holy Spirit. Do y'all believe that? God wants to fill you with the power. I'm going to say it again. God wants to fill you with the power of his Holy Spirit. And if it was good enough for Mary, well, it is good enough for me. Mary was there when the Holy Spirit fell and she was filled with the Holy Spirit with evidence, which means it just wasn't ethereal. Like, oh my gosh, I think I feel the Holy Spirit. I feel tinglies. No, 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 no. She felt it. She had an encounter. She had something she could talk about. No, I know when the Holy Spirit filled me. I know. And I don't know if y'all remember, but this is a Pentecostal church. I'm just going to say, y'all know we, I know. Y'all be like, it is? I didn't know we signed up for a Pentecostal. Yes, this is a Pentecostal church. We believe in speaking in tongues with the evidence of the Holy Spirit. And we believe that God wants to bless you and God wants to use you through gifts. And Pat, I know it's been a scary subject, but I'm trying to tell you if it was good for my girl Mary, then it's good enough for us. And I'm in the room. I want to be in a room like Mary. I'm not going to leave to the end. So this is our opportunity for you to say, God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. I don't even know what that looks like. But if you did it for my girl Mary, then I want it too. I've been through grief. I've been through tragedy. I've been through heartache. But if you could keep Mary... I know you can keep me. I know you can do it, God. God, I know that you can feel me till in, in, in a way that I can feel you. That you're I would not serve a God I couldn't feel. I couldn't serve a God that I couldn't touch every now and then. I, can't, I wouldn't serve a God that I couldn't feel his presence every now and then. Just sitting and hovering and living inside of me. This is what our Mother's Day celebration is about. We are celebrating the, the life of Mary that it started in mystery. And then God took her through. She didn't know. A lot of us mothers, we had no idea when they put that baby in our arms. It's like, okay, you can go home now. You didn't know what, Lord, I don't know what that. All right. I remember they, when they gave me Tommy, I was like, y'all really going to send me home with a child? Like, why would you do that? <laughs> That's not safe. Like, why would you do that? And you just figure it out. You don't know what we're, we don't always know what we're signing up for. But do you see how Jesus was with her every step of the way? Even through tragedy, even when she didn't understand him sometime, even and even toward the end. I love the end of the story where Mary gets filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Woo! That's so good to me. So let's just go ahead and stand. Let's have everybody stand. Everyone who's watching in the virtual room, 
We truly want to be a church where we experience the power of the Holy Spirit. Not in weird ways. We're not trying to be that weird church that you're scared to invite your friends to because you don't know what's going to happen and who's going to be doing what on a certain day. Um, That's not what we're looking for. We're not looking for the weird church vibe. But what we are looking for is for our community to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And it wasn't just for a good time. Like, woo, we felt the Holy Spirit. When Did you see the fire? Like, no. They were empowered to be witnesses. That's what the presence of the Holy Ghost did in their lives. To be witnesses. God wants to use you to show the power of Jesus in your life to somebody else. It's not for us to have a shouting contest. It's not for us to have a a speaking in tongues battle. It's not for that. It's for us to be a witness. How many want to sign up for that life? God, I want you to use me to be a witness. Use me. Use my life as a testimony. Be like, look, if you can do it for her, you can do it for you. That's our life. We want to bring people into the fullness of God, the fullness of God. So let's just go ahead and pray wherever you are, even online. If this is your heart's desire, God, and and several things we need to pray for. God, we're, we're praying for those who this day is a hard day. Mother's Day could be a hard day. Even though we're celebrating mothers, there's so many complexities that come with motherhood or the experiences or losses or trauma. If this is a hard day for you, we want to pray for you. Lord, that the God will give you comfort and give you peace and you'll be able to celebrate any good or positive things. Um, I lost my mother when I was a teenager, but I'm using this day to celebrate her life. You know, and my grandmothers are no longer with me. I know we had recent losses of grandmother. I'm using this day to celebrate. If it wasn't for my mom, I would not even know the Lord. I followed her down the aisle one day, not even knowing what I was doing. I ended up meeting Jesus on the other side in the fellowship hall. I didn't know it. I was just following my mama. But if it wasn't for my mama, I wouldn't be standing here today. So I'm using this day to celebrate. So we are praying over all those who this might be a a hurting day. And then we want to pray for this merry experience. Come on. If you're here and you're like, ah, I heard the Pentecostal thing. I don't really know about that. But I'm open to it. Mary was open. As soon as that angel came, she was like, bet, let's do it. That's the same kind of of, um, boldness we want with God. God, I don't really know about all this, but I want you to fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit, however you want to do it. Because I know the Holy Spirit will give me help, will give me comfort, will give me peace. The Holy Spirit will help empower me to do the things you called me to do. So if that's you, will you lift your hands? And if those who are watching the audience, will you just really sincerely have a time before you and God and say, God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Come on, pray that out. Say, God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Say it again. God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. And I'm open to whatever that looks like. I'm open to it. God, I want you to fill me with the Holy Spirit. God, I, I'm, let me tell you, when, when the day that I spoke in tongues for the first time was the most wonderful day of my life, I will not lie to you. It was the most beautiful thing that has ever happened to me. I don't understand it. I did not initiate it. I did not make it up. But it's the most beautiful thing that ever happened to me. And I pray that you will experience the same thing. But I only experienced it because I asked. And I say, God, do it. I'm open to it. So this is our prayer. God, fill us. God, fill us. Bless our church, God. We want to be fear-filled believers. We want to be filled and empowered, not for show, not for just the, for being filled safe, but we want to be powerful witnesses for you. God, we want to be empowered to be a witness, to show the world who you are. God, we want you to use the Way Christian Center to be a light to show people your presence. We want this to be a place where your presence resides. Lord, where your spirit hovered, where when people walk in, they could just automatically feel the heaviness of your glory. God, that they would never be the same. We're praying for miracles, oh God. We're praying for signs and wonders. We're praying that things, that miracles and deliverances, God, that people will be set free from addictions, from bondage, from mental challenges, oh God. This will be the place of healing because of the power of your Holy spirit so fill us right now god fill us afresh 
Fill us anew. Even if you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, fill us afresh, oh God. We need a new outpouring. We need a new uh, uh, infilling, God. We want you to fill us to overflowing. So God, we thank you for this time. Bless us. Keep us. Let your word marinate in our spirits. And God, continue to do a work in this place. Continue to bless our pastor. God, heal him, touch him, and bring him back stronger and better than ever. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful week. Go out and show people the way. <laughs>